Hey, this video uh, is about this new turbo setup. I'm sure you figured that out from the title. So this will be more of a hanger slash shop type video. I haven't done one of those in a while. Uh, and this actually was all completed back before uh, I even went on that Utah trip that you just saw in the last video. I had about five, six hours on the setup, tested everything out, got it tuned in right, dialed in, and then took off and headed to Utah. And it did great out there. And I'm really liking this setup. So. But we got to go way back in time to start this. Um, back in, I think, about April, this whole thing started. Thomas from Edge had sent me this prototype turbo to do the testing on. It's this TDO4 HL based Mitsubishi turbo with a billet compressor wheel and an anti surge housing, which that part was set up by Vanderlee Systems out of Sweden, I believe they are. And they sent it over with the idea this was going to be a very high altitude capable turbo. So it showed up, it had this little tiny turbine housing on it and the idea was I think what they were shooting for was a turbo that was capable of high pressure ratios which means it will operate better up high to maintain power but it had this small turbine housing so that it will still spool up up high so see something can happen when you have a turbo on an engine and you're down at lower altitudes the engine makes enough you know it, it can draw in enough air and fuel even without the turbo to create enough exhaust energy to drive the turbo to then spool up the turbo to then make more power which then creates more exhaust okay hence having a wastegate you have to vent it at a certain point so basically what you have is a the capability to drive that turbo up no problem but when you go up super high your engine effectively becomes much smaller you know at 18,000 feet we have roughly half the oxygen available so your engine is roughly half as big um, at that altitude so there, there comes a point where you may not be able to relight that turbo. If you pulled the power back and then put the power to it again, it would never swool back up and actually make boost and make power. And it's kind of like having a flame out. You'd have to, you know, drop back down. So I think that's what they were shooting for. However, the problem was when I put the turbo on and tested it back in April or whenever, um, or March, might have been March, the, uh, the the small housing was too small and the wastegate that was in that housing was too small and the turbo was just too reactive. Uh, I've been down this road before and I suspected an issue when I put it on. So I brought the power up slowly. And when I got to 52% throttle, I was at the, the maximum desired boost at that, this altitude. And the wastegate was kicked wide open. So it was unable to control the boost, not even close. It would be just totally unusable. So anyway, I got a hold of Vander Lee, went back and forth with them discussing and explaining and told them we need a larger housing with a larger wastegate. They said they would look for one. I couldn't find one that really fit the bill. They located something out of Japan, I believe it was, and said they'd have it sent over. Uh, that, took, that took several months. I, I received the housing, I think it was the end of August. So that I had put the old turbo back on, just shelved that whole project, didn't expect any to go anywhere. Got the, the turbine housing they found, it was perfect. It was the right size that I specified, had a much larger wastegate, uh, you know, relief, you know, wastegate hole. And, uh, and I thought, man, this might work. So uh, I put it on, put it together, had to, had to do some custom stuff. And that's what I want to kind of get more into in this video is showing you the custom stuff I had to build. There's no flange available. This particular housing is actually off a Kubota diesel engine once I got it and researched it. And the only available like flange is a cast iron elbow that comes off the end of it that goes to a muffler on the tractor. So I had to, I bought a flange I thought was right, but it ended up not being, and I had to cut it up and, and re-weld it and make a whole thing and make a dump pipe and all this stuff. So it was a fun little project. Thankfully, it ended up being worth it. Like I say, the turbo, I, I like it a little bit better. It makes a little bit more power, the same boost level, so I could turn everything down. And it, it's a little bit laggier. It doesn't respond quite as quick, but it's not, not bad at all. And it seems to produce slightly lower outlet temperatures, which is a plus, of course, too. So uh, a little bit more efficiency there, and I like that. So I want to show you guys what went into that. It was, a, it was a fun project. Fairly involved, not too bad, but kind of fun. I think you guys might enjoy it. Let's get into it.
All right, this one was tough. Unfortunately, the flange I bought didn't fit. It was for a DSM, and I didn't realize it because it's the same bolt pattern, but it's larger than what I had. What I have is like the same thing, but shrunk down about 10%, so nothing lines up. Um, and what I have is, is a Kubota bolt pattern after doing some research, and there is no flange available because the only thing they have is this cast iron elbow that goes to a muffler and weighs 30 pounds. And so anyway, I decided... Well, I'll make this flange work. It's stainless steel, and I'd have to buy a piece of stainless, which is, you know, more money and more time, and maybe I can make this work. So I cut out the center divider, cut off the end and flipped it around and ground it and cut some pieces and fit it back in there. And then I had to put the, the flange in the middle a couple times, and somehow I kept having to change where I was milling the hole. I think I bent it when I had it in the mill because of the way I was squeezing this thing, I think I bent it and that caused me to have to chase myself around. But I've got room now with a washer. Um, I'll be able to clamp those down. Uh, it's gonna be a little tricky because, you know, like here, the pipe's gonna fit fairly close. Seems to happen a lot. I can bend it in a little bit to make sure there's room to get a, a bolt or a nut on the stud. Anyway, point is, it, I've, got, I've got enough coverage it should work. It's ugly. When I'm all said and done, I can grind all these corners and take some material off all these edges where I don't need so much material. It's hanging over the edge right now. So it's wasteful and heavy and looks bad. But it's functional, or what should be. The tricky part is, of course, I have to weld this piece on. And I gotta weld it on pretty good and then I'm gonna have to machine it back down. All right, set up to weld here. Um, so I'm gonna start kind of tacking it together and then I'll grind it out and get a better, more penetration, better weld. Okay, so I got it welded together enough to hold it, weld it on the insides and the outside, and then um, I'll take it off and grind it and weld through the grooves there. Um, I could do this top side with it right on there, just grind it, weld it. I might actually do that just so it's held on there kind of flat, just so a little less warpage. All right, so I welded up the top. I ground it down in about halfway, not quite, and then filled it back in. All right, so that's the bottom side there, and uh, of course that's all gonna get ground down until it's flush again, so it makes a good seal. Okay, so as you can see, I'm getting pretty close. I've been working it here on this, this sander, and I've had good luck with this thing, being able to make pretty flat, uh, flanges and stuff. So I've been working it down. Here's the backside. I started with this, got it, got pretty close, realized, okay, that works pretty good. I don't think what I was going to do is flatten this so I could put it on the surface grinder, weld it to a, another plate. But after working with it, I realized, you know, I might be able to just do this in, in, in entirety. So if you see, I've got some, some stuff here still, it hasn't quite ground out, but it, it lays flat on the table. It doesn't rock, uh, you know, using a lot of water, keeping it cool. And as you finish off, I want to keep the heat down big time so that it, it'll lay flat, but I think I'm going to be able to just do it by hand like this and uh, have a pretty good flange, actually, so not bad. All right, there it is. It uh, came out good. Really pretty darn good. Pretty happy with that. Now i got to weld it up, and then I'll have to reface it again, but that is, uh, that's not bad for having to piece it together and grind it out and do a lot of work, you know? Okay, so here I'm adapting stuff on now. I had to make a bracket because this turbo uses a V-band to hold the center section on instead of like a four-bolt deal like the old one. Uh, it's a little hard to see here. I got it all wrapped up, but there's this plate right here, this bracket, actually bolts on where the bolts that hold the exhaust housing on. And uh, so that gives a nice good bracket. Now, I still have this mount and I'll still have like two mounts. I'll make two good hardy mounts over here that hold the dump pipe. But I wanted one more. So I built this bracket off the engine mounts, pretty heavy duty, um, tigged on a uh, stainless piece on the V-band. I tighten the V-band first, and this all still lines up okay. I'll feel okay about putting some tension on a nut there. Probably won't go overkill and I'll make sure it all fits and lines up nice because I don't want to put any weird tension on the V-band. Although these are super heavy duty V-bands, so they could take a little abuse. Okay, so I got the turbo all mounted up. Uh, oil lines are done. Everything but the exhaust is done. And it came out pretty good. That bracket was a little bit of a pain 
to get the bolt in, as you can see. So obviously I should have put that somewhere else. Uh, but you know, I only have so much area to work with when you're coming off that V-band clamp. So I got the TIG out. Uh, I just you put that, I'm starting to put this together here, uh, the uh, dump pipe and shaping that was a pain, but I got it, I think oriented about right and uh, should come out okay. So I just gotta, I'm gonna tack it in one more spot here and then I'll pull it off and actually start welding things up for real. All right, well, I'm just getting this welded up and it's coming out pretty good. I'm back purging it and that is not too bad. I'm pretty happy with how that came out there. So I'll clean up the inside a little bit and uh, do a few things and then, yeah, it's going on. All right, there it is. Uh, I just got to finish making my little brackets here to support it, but it's all bolted on. And uh, just got to clean it up a little bit. Still got some junk on it. But anyway, looks pretty sweet. It's actually going to be hidden behind the uh, that extended lip I made for cooling. So you actually won't even see this because it's about flush with that. But yeah, pretty sweet. Came out good. So where my mounts are, they don't line up too well. Uh, unfortunately, I just kind of guessed on them. So I, uh, I just welded up an aluminum, pretty heavy duty aluminum, uh, mount because I couldn't make those bends. The aluminum will break I'm trying to make a sharp bend, but that should work. Just took a little extra time. Alright, just warming her up and uh, checking for leaks and whatnot and then I'll, uh, I'll start putting a little power to it and we'll fly it a little bit, I guess, if everything looks good. All right, so I made the first flight with the new turbo setup, and my thoughts are as follows. Um, I ported that wastegate a little bit. I shouldn't have done that. It made the wastegate too touchy. So it's venting so much that you barely open it, and it's dump and boost, which means it makes the servo a little too touchy. So I'm operating in like a 20%, 25% range instead of ideally probably you'd be using about double that. So one thing I might do is extend this arm out a little further just to get a little more resolution and then I'll have to retune, but that's fine. So I may do that because right now the boost is hunting a little bit. It'll go up, it'll go down, it'll go up, it'll go down. It's having trouble finding its spot and I think it's just, it's, it's too touchy. It doesn't whistle quite as loud at lower RPMs as the other one, unfortunately, but it does whistle pretty good overall. And in the air, I can actually hear it. It's weird, I didn't, I didn't hear the other one when you're like at cruise power, but this one I can actually hear it whistling, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, um, power-wise, it does appear that it, it, it makes a little bit more power at the same boost from what I'm seeing. Okay, there it is. As you can see, I welded on an extension there, and uh, I don't know why that won't focus, but anyway, whatever. But I extended it out approximately 55%, and uh, that will... Uh, Give me the needed resolution on that servo i think that i was lacking and make it smoother so the boost is not oscillating up and down um so i'm going to mount it all back up reset the uh servo to the right values and everything so it's correct and then and then uh change all my tables i'll go about 60 percent to be on the safe side and then ease into the throttle and see what we got and tune from there all right, so I made some more adjustments to this turbo setup, kind of just to the, well, part of it obviously is just the cow in general, but uh, built a new scoop here. Um, pretty happy with how it came out. Looks pretty good. It's quite a bit larger. It wasn't because I was trying to funnel more air in, it's because I was trying to allow myself to let the filter come further out this way. There's just no room on this narrow cow. And I was very limited on what I could run for a filter. Now I can run a little bit larger filter. I got a little bit more clearance. Uh, the engine torques upwards so it only gets more clearance and there's a eighth of an inch plus there So it'll be fine um, And I built this this setup inside internally with a uh, Piece of seat hose or scat hose or whichever one it is that seals off so it creates this chamber in there It's not like sealed airtight, but just enough to keep um, You know the air kind of contained in there 
So it's got this chamber. It's easy to take the cowl off and put it apart. It just pushes up on there and there's a couple of little lips. Uh, like, like you can see that one down there maybe. A couple of little lips, little tabs that hold that hose and line it up. And um, the reason for that is, again, I'm not necessarily trying to build pressure. It's got a turbo. It can build all the pressure I need without any trouble. Feeding air to it, cold air, of course, is important. But I don't want to blow a bunch of air into the cowl and then offset the air coming in through the nostrils, uh, you know, that you're trying to cool everything with. So that's why that's actually sealed off. And, um, you know, this is, like I say, this is way bigger than it needs to be. It could be half that big and be plenty. But it was about getting some room to allow that larger filter. And then I extended this down because on the new setup, the pipe was uh, up, up inside. It was only, it came to about right here. And it was still below the belly. The airplane wasn't hurting anything, but it was getting more crap all over the belly and my camera on the tail. So I decided I'll go ahead and extend that pipe down. So I cut it off, welded on a new piece here. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Sorry, this one got really long too. I, I thought this was going to be like a five minute quick video, just showing a little project. And it went on and on and on. There was a lot to cover there. So if you're still here, good job. Uh, and thanks for watching. But uh, also, I'm going to throw in a quick little hanger update on this video. We've been uh, working on the hanger, and by again, by we, we, I mean mostly Dad. But uh, it's coming along. Long ways to go still, but we've made some real progress. Just wanted to give you a quick update, kind of show you what's been going on with that. Well, this is a little update on our hanger we're building at home here. Um, this hanger is humongous because Dad doesn't do anything that isn't elaborate and overbuilt and a little over the top that's just how he rolls and he's like hey if i'm going to go to the trouble of building a hanger we're going to build a hanger so anyway it's a uh, pretty serious building and uh what's cool is i actually have a car lift i used to do a lot of car stuff big into drag racing and whatever and so i'll be able to put the lift down in the end and then there's actual doors you can drive through the side if that's easier, you know, to get to it, to avoid airplanes. Yeah, as you can see, he's got some interesting contraptions he's built here for being able to get up and work on this thing on the sides and stuff without having to move ladders around and do things. He can, he can, <laughs> it's pretty, uh, you guys have watched my channel for a while, you won't be surprised, you know how dad is. He's got crazy interesting contraptions. Man, I can't wait to have this here at home it's going to be amazing because my house is just right up there you're looking at it so it's a literally you just walk for a minute and then come right down here and be able to work on stuff i mean my hanger is real close by right now i can see it from my house so it's not like i have it bad like many people do so i don't mean to complain about what i have now i'm just saying this is going to be so amazing to have this at home this humongous building the only bummer is we can't afford to do concrete in it, so I'm not sure what we're gonna do for flooring. Might get some kind of big industrial kind of carpet thing and roll out, or I don't know, we're throwing around ideas. And as you can see here, uh, this is a more recent clip right here. We've got even more of the roof on, and still a lot to go. It's it's tough trying to you know, get materials. Things are so expensive right now, and, and do the work. And like I say, mostly Dad's been the one doing that, but uh, I'll help him more when it comes to putting the metal on and, and stuff. And uh, it, anyway, I'm just excited, man. I mean, you want to talk about the dream. This is the dream. If you look here, this is looking out my front window of my house. So as you can see, that <laughs> that is the ultimate dream right there. And I'm pretty excited for that, even though it'll still be a while. But not too long. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and hanging out, sticking around. Um, please subscribe if you haven't. It'd help a lot. Patrons, thank you guys very much, and uh, we got some fairly big stuff coming up here in a while. Uh, it'll be it'll be a little while, so I'm not going to get into all that just now, but definitely more to come. So stick around, and uh, yeah, be some exciting things to happen. Thanks a lot, guys. You know the deal. Take care. See you on the next one.